Hello, everybody. This is Benny Hills, and I'm very excited to be playing my first Modern Cube League. So for those of you who don't know, this is sort of like Vintage Cube in that, well, it's not actually that much like Vintage Cube, but it's a pretty high power level uh, draft format. There's Modern Cube, Legacy Cube, and Vintage Cube. I do like Vintage the most, but Modern is really cool. The biggest change, well, so also for some background, I was the trophy leader last time in Modern Cube. And um, this time around, there's a couple changes, the biggest of which is they've removed all the signets and replaced them with like some companions and other cards. So uh, I actually thought green was probably the best color before, and now I definitely think green is the best color because there's less ramp and less ramp mana fixing in other colors. So, I mean, I'm not going to force anything. Uh, I also shouldn't say green is the best color. I think mono green is quite bad, actually. But um, green allows you, specifically Kodama's Reach and Cultivate are just absolutely phenomenal cards here. Um, I had a lot of success with just, like, base green, splash bombs of every color, like, big haymaker decks. That was where I really did well last Modern Cube when I was the trophy leader. So, again, we're not going to be forcing anything here, but that's an archetype to keep our eye on. So, yeah, um, I'll see you soon in the draft. And I'm really excited to have this format out. Again, it's not as good as Vintage Cube, but it's a great format that I'm very excited to play. So, thanks for watching, and I'll see you soon. All right, here we are for the first pack, and we got some spicy ones, as always. There is the Thassa's Oracle Inverter of Truths combo in the cube, so uh, that is one thing we could do. I don't think we'll first pick that, but that's something to be aware of. Season Pyromancer is very good. Um, I like Nissa a lot. I mean, I was just talking about how I do like green in general, and that does help. Um, this Liliana has overperformed for me. Um, we should probably just take this, though. Um, I it's pretty common to have like I mean there so devo devotion decks are supported you can do mono blue or mono black devotion or even sort of mono red um but most of the time you're playing multiple colors and prismatic vista is just perfect fixing it keeps us open so we can see what things other people are passing um yeah I think that's probably the best pick here if this wasn't in the pack I think I would likely go with Nissa but we'll take this. Okay, so, hmm, some good options here. Man, I love these sorts of formats. So, Ugin is just one of the best cards in the format. There's, like, a lot of Planeswalkers and a lot of good creatures, and Ugin is just such a good trump card that goes over the top of what everyone else is trying to do. So, that is one good option. Another good option is Beanstalk Giant. This is another one of those cards that just really helps you ramp and fix your mana, so you can have, like, a sort of base green multicolor deck. Teddy Oba is also amazing in the base green multicolor decks. Um, good with Prismatic Vista and Beanstalk Giant. But I think it's primarily between those three cards for me right now. And I think I'm going to go with Ugin. It's just a little bit more of a unique effect. There's other cards like Beanstalk Giant. We also don't know we're playing green, although we do want to be ramping if we have Ugin. But this is just like a very unique effect that's extremely powerful. Very good when you're behind. Can also close out the game when you're ahead. Um, and there's just not another, a lot of other cards that do things like this, so we will take the Ugin and try and pick up some ramp. Okay, the only piece of ramp is not a great one, it's Nature's Claim. There are a lot of blue cards though, and so like any format, blue is good here. So we could just go with Disallow potentially. I do like Clever Imposter. Hmm... I think it's, I'm leaning between Disallow, Clever Imposter, and Avacyn's Pilgrim right now. There are some aggressive decks. I mean, you see, like, Beaumont Courier and Gravecrawler, so Disallow is pretty bad against those things. Um, we could just take the Pilgrim. But blue looks pretty open, and if we could be, like, base blue with Ugin as a top end, that's pretty good. I'm going to go for Disallow, I think. This is just... Very versatile interaction that's very strong. Um, it can deal with Planeswalker as well. I guess Clever... Uh, never mind, actually. I'm going to take Clever Impersonator. There's a lot of opponents, Planeswalkers, that you can copy with this card. And it's just, like, a very good one. So this is Plain Swamp Forest. Okay. There's a Flooded Strand. A Sower of Temptation. No real mana acceleration here. A couple nice lands. I think I'm just going to go with the Flooded Strand here. We still don't know really what colors we're going to be playing, and, I mean, we could take the Triome, but 
we're likely to want to be blue in some capacity, so I think I'm going to go with the Flood of Strand here. We still don't really know what we're playing. We're pretty much open to anything, but I think I like the start we're in. Okay, so there's a Thassa Deep Dwelling if we wanted to try and go Mono Blue Devotion. There's no ramp. There's a couple payoffs that are decent. Um, hmm. Yeah, this pack is sort of a brick for us. Inferno Titan is a very good card. Doesn't particularly mesh with what we have, but it is just very good. Um, we could just take one of these lands, but that doesn't seem great. Thassa is... I mean, maybe we should just take this Thassa. Yeah, I'll take the Thassa. We could take the Inferno Titan also, but there, like, there's a world where Thassa ends up being amazing. I mean, we could still end up in Mono Blue Devotion. And so I think I'll go with that, but we're very, very much not wed to anything right now. Okay, I think this is a pretty easy Sakura Tribe Elder. There's no Mono Blue stuff here. I don't think it's likely we'll end up wanting to be Mono Blue Devotion. And this is exactly the kind of ramp you want with Ugin. It gives you land. It's cheap. Um, so, like, mana accelerants that are creatures that you have to exile with your own Ugin are pretty awkward. And it also can create blue and green mana, so pretty easy to curve Tribe Elder here. Very happy about that. Okay, so we could take a Whisperwood Elemental or a Vivian or a Thought Scour. We don't really have anything that combos with Thought Scour very well right now. So I think I'm just going to take a Vivian. We actually have a surprisingly high creature count right now. And even if we don't have a ton of creatures, this is just a pretty good card. Well, we could just go Whisperwood. Maybe Whisperwood is better. Better. No, I like having a high Planeswalker count in this format. I think I will go with a, with the Vivian. Okay, I think we're just going to go into blue-green Planeswalkers. I mean, Strat Center is okay. Acidic Slime is pretty good. But, I mean, this is a bit tough with the mana, but I think it's worth it taking here anyways. So, yep. Yeah. We're in Planeswalker Tribal. Ooh, very, very happy that Nissa came back. Okay, green is looking pretty open, so I don't think we'll be playing... I mean, we might even just be mono green still, potentially. But we'll take the Nissa. This card is awesome. Okay, pretty happy to get a Corsair. I'm sad Beanstalk Giant's gone, but Corsair is still quite good, so we'll take this. We also have three shuffle effects right now, so that's pretty sweet. And we also have Vivian, so... With Vivian, you can play both creatures and lands off the top. Ooh. Uh, uh, Progenitor Mimic is likely to be in our colors, but I think we should just go with the Avacyn's Pilgrim here. Accelerating in a Planeswalker's ahead of curve is so much better than just playing them on curve. Also, we don't want to send a signal. Like, someone seeing, like, a last pick, one drop, green accelerant isn't really the signal we want to be sending. Okay, we still could end up in Mono Green, in which case Steel Leaf Champion is a decent option. Alright, I'll take a Tarmogoyf, sure. So green is definitely the color to be in here for us, I think. Uh, we still might be in green-blue or Mono Green, not really sure, but green is definitely a start. Thassa is looking pretty bad right now. It's good with Nissa, but that's pretty much it. Clever Impersonator is pretty strong. But we'll see. I mean, it's not great with our own Planeswalkers because they're legendary. Well, Mono Red looks open, but that's not what we're doing here. Ooh, okay, so Birds of Paradise looks great here. Karn is sort of Ugin's brother-in-law. They work well together, but Birds of Paradise is just the perfect card for us. Um, cheap, accelerant that, you know, we have a lot of threes, fours, five. Playing them ahead of schedule is good. This fixes our mana, so pretty easy Birds of Paradise here. I would like to play Karn, but... I'm definitely taking birds. Alright, this pack is a lot less clear. There's a lot of blue cards, but none of them are really the sort of direction it looks like we're going. Um, Beast Whisperer is okay. Actually, it's pretty good. We could also just take Ulamog and like really have the top end unlock. We don't have a ton of mana ramp right now, but I do think having access to this sort of card is nice for the matchups where you really just want to go over the top. Yeah, I think we'll take this. Having Ugin and Ulamog means we can definitely go over the top of mid-range decks, and then we just need to make sure we fill out our deck with, like, beefy creatures so that we can also have a good chance against the aggro decks. 
This may or may not make the main deck, depending on how everything else looks. Okay, Cultivate is an easy, easy pick here. This is just awesome. I would like a Mindstone too, but this can get us double blue. It can get us double green. This card is good, but not really the direction we're going. Um, Yeah, this makes me much, much happier to have just picked up this Ulamog. So we'll take the Cultivate. Okay, there's a Breeding Pool. I would like either one of these two for sure. Or even Solemn, actually. Actually, ooh, all of those look quite good. But I think we should probably take the Breeding Pool here. We want our Flooded Strand to be able to fetch green. And this helps with that. I mean, I guess we're not committed to blue. We could still be mono green, potentially. Like, how does this look? If we're just mono green, and then we pick up Solemn. Hmm. I don't hate that. Both of these blue cards are honestly pretty mediocre. Yeah, I actually am going to take Solemn. I think this card is awesome when we're trying to ramp into these big colorless threats. We have no fours right now. Um, It's good at all stages of the game. Oh, this is very close. I guess we could also just take, like, Compulsive Research. But I think we'd rather Breeding Pool than Compulsive Research. How much... Uh, no, no we, we should probably take this. Well, actually, no. We'll take the Solemn. We will take the Solemn. Because Solemn also fixes, and we have other good fixing already. Okay. Dev, easy Garrick here. This is great because it'll help fix or it'll help ramp us up to these big things, and it also plays well well with our plan of having a lot of planeswalkers. So we will take that. Okay, I actually really like getting a Thrag Tusk here. So yep, we'll take that. This really solidifies our aggro matchup well. Ooh, awesome to get a late Utopia Sprawl here. We don't have Arbor Elf to really go off with this, but hopefully we can pick one up. And even if we don't, it's just a one-mana accelerant that is hard for the opponent to interact with and can fix your mana. So, pretty much a perfect card for us. It does die to Ugin, unfortunately, but... Hmm. So, now we need to decide between Tectonic Edge and Mystic Snake. Tectonic Edge is a, a lot better if we are mono green, which could be the case. And this is double blue, and we're basically playing at sorcery speed, so if we just pass with mana up, it's pretty obvious, so... I think I'm going to go with the Tech Edge. We still could be Mono Green here. And Mystic Snake is like not really the type of card you splash for. Okay. I'm not super into Collected Company in this deck. Wolf Run is interesting. Westvale Abbey is probably worse than Wolf Run. I think I'm going to go with the Keswick Wolf Run here. Gifts Ungiven isn't looking great. So yeah, we'll take this. All right. Rootbound Crag seems pretty good, uh, given that we just picked up the Wolf Run. We can have, like, one red source and then just splash for the Wolf Run if we end up in basically mono green. Okay, Master of the Wild Hunt is a decent late pickup. It's not amazing always. It's very bad against stuff like Lightning Bolt, but there's some matchups where it's amazing. Ooh, okay, pretty happy to get a pretty late option in Baylot. Okay, at this point... um. Prime Speaker Zagana is, or Prime Speaker Vanifar is starting to look a little bit better again. Just having, like, being able to pod, like, Nyssa into Solemn or Baloth into Thrag Tusk is pretty sweet. So we'll see. Genesis Hydra is okay. I like Rada better if we can play it. Can our mana support this? I think it actually potentially can. And Genesis Hydra, I'm not a huge fan of. So I'll take the Rada. Uh, this probably will not make the cut. Ooh, Sun Petal Grove. Well, that's sort of funny that we just got Gavin Township and then that. But Rada is like another courser that is also a very good threat on its own in the late game. So, we'll see. Okay, I think this is a pretty easy Arbor Elf. We already have the Utopia Sprawl to combo with it. Um, we don't have a Breeding Pool, unfortunately, but this is just a very good card. So, yeah, we can take this and maybe wield the Gem Razor or something like that. Ooh, Draga Tree Speaker. Okay, green ramp is open. I would love a Garrick or a Worm Coil Engine, but we should definitely just take this Prime or this Draga Tree Speaker here. That's great acceleration for us. All right, the only mono green card here is Primal Command. There is Xenagos if we end up in red green. There's also Karn. Hmm. We could just end up in red green and not play the Prime Speaker and just go with the Xenagos here. I think Xenagos is better if you can cast it than Primal Command. 
And then we also have four che- four planeswalkers that are four or five mana. Yeah, I think I like Xenoghost here. We'll go with that. Hmm. All right, I'll take the Ferox. We have a lot of non-creature spells, although actually we have a decent number of creatures too. But this is amazing in some matchups, like against Mono Red. Um, and it's like potentially main deckable too, just as like a big creature that can pressure Planeswalkers well. So we'll take that, but ideally start with it in the board. Ooh, Elder Gargaroth. This card I like a lot. Yeah, we'll take the Gargaroth. It's just big, hard to deal with for a lot of decks, and then takes over the game very quickly. Okay, so there's a sword, but I kind of like just taking the Nissa here. Just continuing to lean into the Planeswalker angle. So at this point, Flooded Strand is looking bad, but and we probably actually will not start with a Tech Edge because we have fairly heavy mana requirements, but I like getting a Nissa here. There's also a Chandra, but I think I like Nissa a bit more. So right now we have 23 spells, so we could just run this. Um, if we were to make cuts, probably first on the chopping block, Still Leaf Champion is potentially going to be hard to cast. Also, actually, Tarmogoyf looks pretty bad. We don't have ways to fill the graveyard particularly. We are a bit light on plays that cost less than three, so we're going to have to mulligan to these plays a lot of the times. Ooh, okay. Man, I wish Windswept Heath did something, but it just doesn't right now. Actually, it still does something. It's good with um, Corsair and Rada. Uh, I actually think it is probably worth... Oh, there's Bethesda's Oracle. We could have gone for the combo. Rexage is the other option, but I think I would rather take the Windswept Heath. We'll have plenty of playables, I think. I think this deck is pretty good. We could be a bit soft to counter magic, but ooh, Zomri is nice. That's a late thought seize. Black looks pretty open, but I mean, yeah, we're in red green. We want to have a lot of planeswalkers. Zomri is pretty much ideal. So we are back to having 23 spells. That's pretty perfect. Sometimes in these sorts of decks, you can go 16 lands if you have a lot of accelerants, but we have a high curve and um, not as many accelerants as we would really like. I mean, six is a decent number, but not a, a ton. So this is definitely going to be a 17 lander. Okay, I think I like Genesis or uh, Gem Razor a bit more than the Genesis Wave, but we're going to start with that in the board most likely. Although, let's see, it costs three to mutate. We'll see. I'll take Tristani. There's some matchups where we'll definitely want to side in white. And in fact, we could potentially just start white. We have one. We have, let's see, Sun Petal Grove, Gavin Township. Uh, it's, it's close. I, I still think I'm probably not going to start that way, but it's an option. Here's a cough. Are we going to have enough mountains to make that work? Probably not. So I'll just take the Lyra. Wow. Yep, black is open. Uh, we have no ambition of splashing black, so... Alright, well, not too many late pickups here, but I think there's a good deck. So, I think we're just going to run this as is. Steel Leaf Champion is okay. I mean, maybe Gem Razor is better. Let's see, I just want to look at it one more time. It costs three to mutate. And it can give something reach and trample. Yeah, Gem Razor is probably better than Steel Leaf Champion. Although we have a lot of ways to just turn to it. Hmm. Definitely want all of these cards. Uh, we have a lot of threes. Which is better? Steel of Champion or Gem Razor? I think Gem Razor is going to be better for us here. And then we can run it like this. And let's see. I actually think this seems pretty good for red sources. That's one, two, three, four red sources, plus Birds of Paradise, Utopia Sprawl, Secure Tribe Elder, Cultivate. And then in terms of non-green sources, one, two, three. So 14 green. Uh, that's actually probably more than we need. So I'll cut one of these for one mountain. 
And yeah, pretty happy we didn't go into blue. I think that was not the open lane here. We could even splash the Gavany Township, but I don't really want to do that. So I think we're going to run this. And yeah, again, I'm not going to rate this deck because I just don't know Modern Cube well enough yet. But I think this is pretty good. We have... A decent amount of ramp. We have a bunch of great three to six mana or three to five mana plays, and then two top end threats that can always just win the game on their own. We're a bit like if we play against a deck that has a lot of counter magic and card draw, we could suffer. Ooh, wow! Max punish for playing the mountain there. We have to ship this, but if we had a forest, this hand is incredible. Okay, this hand is slow, but we're gonna keep it and definitely put back the ten drop. Having no place for the first two turns is not ideal, but Cultivate into Vivian is pretty nice for turns three and four. Hopefully our opponent doesn't have a turn one play. Okay, that's good. Forest, pass. We're going to save this Prismatic Vista in case we draw a Corsair. So we, next turn we'll go probably just Wolf Run into Cultivate for two Mountains. That's actually a decent draw, although it's annoying that it doesn't hit the Smuggler's Copter. Smuggler's Copter could actually be pretty annoying for us, potentially. So now we go turn four, Vivian, make a 3-3 three, three with Reach. Probably. I mean, we'll see. If they play a creature, and then then that's a little bit risky, because if they have removal spell, they... Oh, man, that's worst-case scenario. That would be very annoying for us to deal with. It makes me sort of want to just go for Solemn and just try and ramp out a quick Ugin. Because if we make a 3-3 three, three with Reach and they have a removal spell, without even playing another creature, they would already be able to kill our Vivian. And I guess then that is soaking up a removal spell and some damage, so it's not like it's a horrible exchange for us, but it's definitely not great. Ooh, okay, Gem Razor is nice. That makes me want to just play Solemn, and then next turn we can go Gem Razor and mutate to kill this, and then... Resolve Vivian on a more friendly board, hopefully. So we'll cast this. It can't block anything, but that's okay. So we will grab that forest and pass the turn back. We're now on six mana, so assuming we draw one more land, we can play a turn six Ugin. So Gem Razor deals with the, with the Smuggler's Copter, and then Ugin can clean up the tokens and whatever else they have. Our life total is a bit like we're taking probably five here so we'll be at 12 so we're not at the healthiest of life totals okay i think we're just gonna pitch vivian here i think gem razor is a bit better than um i mean we need the land we want the ugin and i think we want gem razor for killing the smuggler's copter this gives reach so we can block the one ones profitably Ooh, mistake on their part there. They forgot to uh, crew the copter. So we will play that and then mutate. So we will put the top creature with the abilities of each card underneath it. So we want this to be over. So it's a 4-4. Four, four, and we will destroy that. And we might as well just pump, well, actually, let's see, we could hit them for five by pumping with a wolf run, and then we're taking two. I think that's a worthwhile trade. Hopefully they have a path to exile to accelerate us. Although, actually, either way, we have Ugin next turn. All right, sure. Um, Do we have any need for more red mana? No, I'm just going to grab another forest. Wait, what? Oh, that... What? I don't get my other creature back? They both get exiled? I did not know that was how that worked. I still think we're winning, but that is annoying. The opponent's very far away from using Croak, so they have two planes, which is pretty brutal for them. So hopefully they go, like, flashback souls and then play some three-drop that dies to Ugin. Hopefully they don't thought seize us. Okay, that is... Oh, wait. Oh, yeah, that's that's fine. That's definitely fine. So we discard the Prismatic Vista, and we have 5, 6, 7, 8. So we're already good to go on the land, or on the Ugin. 
So now they'll hopefully just flash back to souls and we can minus zero Ugin to deal with all the tokens. Perfect. Okay. Yeah, we should be pretty much good to go here. I mean, they might have, a, if they have like a murderous rider type card for the Ugin, that would be annoying. But cleaning their board and having a planeswalker on seven seems like a pretty good place to be. So we take the two year. Well, <laughs> we're pretty much set if we draw some land. Like that that's actually a great draw because now lands build us up towards that and spells we can cast. These are that's the only spell in our deck that we couldn't cast before, so now all of our draws are good and I think we're just very ahead. We will minus zero. XL all your tokens and pass it back. If they draw a land. Oh wait, no, they, if they draw a fetch land, they can play Kroxa. And we do lose our Ulamog, but then we can just minus two this to get rid of the Kroxa. Okay, so that will make a Golem, which we can't deal with with the Ugin minus, but we can just plus. So plus here. And Domri is an okay draw. I mean, it's probably better than the land. Like, it still gives us potentially Ulamog next turn and also has other benefits. So one more land and Ulamog is online, which will definitely end the game. If we just take out Sacred Foundry Swamp, they might just concede. And also, if their best player last turn was Blade Splicer, that does not bode well for them this turn. I mean, if they had something like a Murderous Rider, they would have already cast it, so I don't think they have an answer. Sword of War and Peace. Okay, that's not too bad. So we'll see if they go at our face. I kind of hope they don't go at our face, but they probably should. Okay, good play from the opponent. I don't think it'll be enough, but that is good for them. So we take one more down to six. Now we can just absolutely win. So kill your dude. Play land, play Ulamog, and... Oh wait, whoops, I need to add mana first. Also, they can't counter it. Not that I think they have a counter spell, but... So that, and all of this, boom, definitely just hitting two lands. So now this is set to ultimate, this is set to exile most of their library in one attack. This can fight any creature they play. We can also pump up our Ulamog a lot with the Keswick Wolf run, so pretty hard to imagine the way they get out of this one. I guess they could burn us out potentially. But we're about to gain 7 life, so not actually. And then for going forward, their deck looks pretty aggressive. Just like Mardu aggro, I guess. Um, so I kind of like the idea of Tarmogoyf and Ferox. Maybe even splashing for Tristani. Okay, well. Sure, we'll just ultimate. So put in Utopia Sprawl. Gargoyle. I mean, look, we have just all permanent. I'm just going to put everything into play. We'll choose red. And attach this here. Yeah, at this point, our opponent's just letting us have our fun. Like, obviously, it's over, but this is a pretty sweet board. All right, pretty good there. So, on to game two. The opponent is pretty aggressive, so we're going to try and... Go a little lower to the ground if possible. They do have a decent amount of flying, it looks like. Do we want to side into white? We would have one. So if we played one planes, we would have one, two, three. Actually, no, we wouldn't even play that. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That's so free. Yeah, I feel like we probably should bring this in, and bring this in, and we will cut, I think the wolf run on the draw, bring in one planes. I'm not too worried about, like, winning the game, I'm just worried about not losing the game. So we'll cut this forest, um, do we want Master of the Wild Hunt? I think so, I don't think we want Ul uh, Ulamog. And then... I don't think we want Lyra. Double white is a lot harder than single white to procure. Do we cut? Let's see. I mean, we're 
pretty heavy on planeswalkers. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Maybe we should cut a planeswalker. We have a lot of fours and fives. Um, man, I don't really want to cut any of these cards, but I think I'm going to cut Domri. It just doesn't defend itself as well as some of the other cards. I mean, it can fight things, but only when you already have a creatures established. And we, like, it's not good on turn two for that reason. Uh, do we want the Ferox also? Maybe Ferox is better than Master of the Wild Hunt, actually. Because they do have a decent amount of removal. So, yeah, we'll, we'll run it like this. Karmaglyph is another option, but I think I would rather keep it like this because just all these other cards are just too hard to cut. And hopefully we can have a one drop this time. Ooh, wow. Wait, this hand is absolutely gorgeous. Okay, snap keep. Turn two, we'll have four mana. We can play Nyssa. We have Rada to make sure we don't flood. Um, yeah, this is sweet. They have a turn one play. Is it a Thoughtseize or a creature? Oh, they don't have a turn one play. Okay, well, Arbor Elf, if they have Fatal Push, they have Fatal Push. Actually, it might have been better just to play Utopia Sprawl. In general, you definitely want to go Arbor Elf here because now we could have a ton of mana next turn. Oh. Well, that shuts down the Arbor Elf, unfortunately. Well, yeah, we got sort of punished for that line then. We will go land and Utopia Sprawl, naming white or red? I think just white. And we'll pass it back. If they attack with this, I will just trade off. And then next turn, we can either play Rada before playing a land or play Nyssa, both of which seem pretty good. It depends a lot on what they do. Wow, they have perfect mana in all basics. Is it Lingering Souls? Ooh. Scrap Heap Scrounger, okay. No attack. I think I would rather get down... Mm, I think I'm going to get Rotted down. We're not really on the like fast ultimate plan, so I just really don't want to keep drawing lands. Okay, Ugin on top. We'll play the land, pass it back. I will not be trading the Rotted with the Scrap Heap Scrounger, so if they attack, we'll just take the three. And if we can ever get rid of this Revoker, then we can basically just cast Ulamog immediately. I mean, then we'd have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So in two turns, we could do it. Unfortunately, Rada only has first strike on our turn, so we cannot block this profitably. But this is developing well for us. We are, like, developing our mana. We have our colors. We have... Okay, Lingering Sold is annoying. They also have surprisingly a lot of colorless threats, but I think this is fine still. So we will play land, Nyssa. And I'm just going to make a 1. We could go for... Um, yeah, no, no value in attacking here. We Well, actually, do we want to attack? Are we going to be blocking with this Rata? We could be, so I'll roll for the back. I don't think 3 damage will really matter. Um... The Solemn will help us get up to Ugin, so we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 mana. Next turn we go 6, 7, and then we can play Ugin the turn after, so that's pretty good. And now that we have this Nissa down, like it will likely die, but it'll sort of stall them. They'll be fighting the Nissa instead of our life total. Oh, they are just ignoring the Nissa. Interesting. Well, I think that's good for us. I'll just block here. I wonder if that means they have a removal spell for the Nissa, or if they just don't care. Yeah, that was if they don't have an answer, that was definitely a mistake, because just making plants will definitely offset the two damage that they got in. Glorybound Initiate. Okay, well, this is definitely looking like Ugin is going to be good. Um, I would love to draw that card, but we definitely want to play the Solemn, so I'm going to do that. And then we're, we're doing this before we play the land, in case we now reveal a land on top. So grab the planes. Well, another good draw on top, even though it's not what we were thinking of. 
Now we plus again and pass the turn back. And this is looking like an opportunity to go for... I mean, so Ugin will kill a lot of our own things unless we... Actually, I guess we're probably just doing it for zero to deal with the souls. I don't care about the glory bound initiate that much. Yeah, this looks like a pretty great situation for us. Still no attack with Arata. I would probably throw this away to preserve my life total at this point, even though it is a good threat right now in this stage of the game, just because we have like plenty of other gas between the Garrick and the Ugin. And this Nissa that's starting to threaten ultimate. This seems like it should be a pretty great matchup for us. Like, we just go a little bit bigger than them, and we don't have a ton of answers to their flyers, but Ugin is just such a trump card in the matchup. They're sending everything at us. Sure. I think I'm just going to block with a Solemn, actually. Okay, they're exerting this. So we'll chump this with a plant and block this with a Solemn. Yeah, I think our opponent has not played this game optimally. Like... This Nissa, uh, our life total isn't low enough that they can just like cheese out a quick win. Oh, a little bit annoying. We would have been able to play this land for free if we hadn't drawn the card, but still fine. Luris, oh, interesting. Okay. Well, that's a bit annoying actually. So we will go land Ugin. And I think just minus zero. It is annoying that they have so many colorless threats, but it's not a big deal. Now we make our plant and pass the turn back. And next turn we can play Corsair into Garrick and really solidify our board presence. The Lurus doesn't untap. They can't really attack with a Revoker. If they do attack with a Lurus, I'll just trade it with a Radha, and that's fine. Especially with Corsair coming up, Radha, I mean... It's a big creature because it has this ability, but the main point of this card is being able to play land off the top, and Corsair lets us just do that better, so um, this won't be too much missed if we lose it. This is really demonstrating how good Ugin is. I'm happy to have taken this over Beanstalk Giant, even though Beanstalk would be good in this deck. Um, I think this is going to be a big part of our win condition in a lot of games. We'll see what their attack is here. I don't think they really have any good ones. Yeah, this is totally fine, so we'll just Block here, keep our auto around. We can just keep making tokens every single turn. This Nissa has saved us so much more life than they've dealt in the damage that they didn't kill this with. Oh, that can kill Ugin. So that actually is very good for them. They can kill Ugin and then recast it and from their graveyard. So actually, we might be behind now, as weird as that is. I mean, we do still have this Nissa that's threatening to ultimate, but... Okay, so we will go... Three mana, Corsair. Play land. Pay four, five for Garrick. Make a three, three. Make a plant. And pass the turn back. And now next turn, we could draw infinite cards if we want to. Uh, not literally infinite, but we could pump up Rada. It would go up to 11 power, and then we could draw 11 cards with the Garrick. We're also threatening to ultimate with Nyssa, so they really have to acknowledge our Planeswalkers here. They've basically been ignoring our Planeswalkers all game, which was foolish, and they're not going to be able to make the same foolish mistake anymore. They don't really have any profitable attacks. I mean, I guess they could, like, shoot. Uh, yeah, I, mean, I don't even really know. I can't really imagine a way they get out of this without a card that just kills Planeswalkers. I mean, Elder Spell would be good, but... I think we're pretty much good to go. And again, I, I think if they had killed our Nissa earlier on, we would probably just lose. Or at least be solidly on the back foot, given that they later had an answer to our Ugin. Goblin Guide, okay, they really are trying to be aggressive. But a really clogged board state favors the Planeswalkers over the Goblin Guide any day. <laughs> This is a cool combo, that being able to lure us to shoot something down. Glass Casket, okay. So they take out Corsair, I would imagine. Maybe Rada. Okay. Bye-bye, Corsair. Okay, if they attack everything at us, I will be very frustrated. Like, I want to have good games. That's just, like, 
you have to like if you just let me gain all this life that will absolutely offset your entire attack come on opponent just think about it <laughs> all right well if they send everything at us which is sort of what it looks like they're gonna do we can just ultimate this to gain two three four five six seven eight life draw eight cards and that will just absolutely end the game so they revealed our null hide ferox on top we will chump here trade block they can kill our rata if with a um the crater maker if they want to but i don't even care about that this nissa ultimate is just gonna win the game by itself Okay, yep, brought it down. Now you can recast your Goblin Guide. I mean, if they have a Bolt for this, okay, yeah. That just, why would you attack me there? That's, yeah, I mean, sure. So we just immediately gain all that life back and draw a full hand. And now we can pretty much never lose. So I don't think we need more card draw right now, so I'll just make some beast. a beast. We can go land Garrick for one mana, essentially. Untap two lands. Cast Tristani. And cast Garg or er, Bailoff. I guess we could have held that to try and play around Croxa, but I just think padding the life total is I mean there's not really a losing line at this point. The only way they could get out of this is with a bunch of flyers. I actually am just going to hit for two, I think. Yeah. The only way they could get out of this is with a bunch of flyers. And even then, we have Gargroth, which has reach. And we dealt with their Lingering Souls already. Oh. Okay, actually, that I forgot about. Maybe that wasn't a Yeah, that wasn't a spike. Should not have attacked there. Now they can recast the Revoker and name one of the Garricks. But this Garrick Ultimate would probably just win. And this Garrick is better, so either way, we have a good thing going. They cast that, probably naming... I don't even know. Naming Primal Hunter. Okay, well, so we have Overrun available to us. I would love to draw a Gem Razor. No attacks. Okay, so can we just win is the question. If we ultimate, then we have 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, plus 3 per creature. So 14 plus 15, we'd be swinging for 29. So we wouldn't win, but we would basically win. I still think I would actually rather just um develop my board more and set up for winning next turn. We have a creature on top. We'll just cast that. Cultivate, don't care about that. So I think I'm just going to fetch it away. Actually, no, I'm going to minus this. And then cast Gargaroth. Actually, no, I'm not even... I am going to fetch this away. We don't have that many creatures that we even want to get. Plus, I'll just use this to take a look at the library. We have Gem Razor, but Gem Razor and, Nis and Vivian don't really work how we want it to. So, yeah, we don't really have any... I guess we could get Nissa with a minus. Hmm, actually, that does look sort of good. Yeah, I think I am going to do that, actually, even though we can't flip the Nissa this turn. So, cast Gargaroth. Grab the Nissa. We get the Shuffle, luckily, taking this bad card off the top. There is a gem razor on top. We actually can just cast that now. That's pretty sick. So we could kill this or the glass casket. Although then they could just recast the glass casket. So we will untap two target lands. Mutate this onto one of our lifelinkers. Destroy the Phyrexian Revoker. Alright, sweet. Yeah, I mean, that was, 
that was just domination. There was no way we were going to lose that one. So pretty good start. Easy 2-0. Hopefully we can keep it going into round two. See you there. All right, here we are for round two. Unfortunately, Bring Back Affinity has defeated us in the die roll, but we have a good hand, so we'll keep. We can play turn two, Sakur Tribe Elder, and then turn three, Radha, having not played land, and potentially get the free land there. And Gem Razor will also put in some nice work, hopefully, to deal with artifact enchantments. We rolled a two. And they were, oh, we rolled a two and then a three, okay. Opponent's on a mold of six. I somewhat enjoy my opponent mulling to six, but I prefer them not to go lower. Like, I'll take a little bit of an edge, but I still want it to be a game. So hopefully they get to keep this one. Given that we have Rada in hand, we will definitely be holding the Prismatic Vista. If we, on turn three, play Rada and don't see land on top, I might just play the Vista then. So we can have, like, a fetch available to us. Okay, basic island, pass. Well, I would normally say that was a pretty horrendous draw, drawing a 10-drop on turn 1, but against Basic Island Go, it's pretty likely we'll have time, so that could actually end up being a nice one. Mountain, okay, that changes things slightly, but still no play, which is good. Hopefully they don't have a counterspell, but I'm not going to play around anything here. Ooh, yeah, still not playing around anything, though. Nice, that resolved. So now we can fetch up a Mountain end of turn. No play. Wow. Okay. Well, this is off to a pretty good start for us. Ooh. Do we want to play that instead? I think we do. I think that's a bit better. Nice. Okay. So we can untap two lands. Play our bird. And now we have four, five, six, seven. So next turn we go to eight mana. We're getting very close to a quick Ulamog. If we draw a ramp spell on turn 4, then on turn 5 we could cast Ulamog. They could have a burn spell for the birds. Okay, they do not. No play once more. Okay, yeah, this is not too much of a game so far. Alright, we will cast the Courser. Remand. Okay. Alright, I'm just going to untap two lands and play Courser again. We could make beasts, but I think having a, a high loyalty on this against a blue-red deck is pretty good. Okay, that is not a card we want to draw, so I'm probably just going to shuffle it away. Although, at the same time, actually, maybe we do want it. Well, either way, we're definitely just passing here, but we have 5, 6, 7, 8. Nah, nah, I don't think we want that. They did draw their land now, so they could have a counterspell up. If we shuffle and then draw land, it's a little annoying, but... I mean, in general, you would prefer to save your fetch land for when you could just play a land off the top immediately if it is there. So maybe we do just untap. That's pretty close. Yeah, I actually think I am going to untap. I just really... Okay, yeah, that is, like... Now we'll shuffle. Do they have a draw step effect? Quick taking away our Ulamog would be a little annoying. So we will fetch, grab a mountain. Okay, perfect. That was ideal. So now we get our land off the top. Now we can scry that away, probably. Um, we will go to combat and hit for two. Two, four, six, eight, nine mana right now. So we will make a beast. And I think I am just going to play the Arbor Elf and nothing else. I don't want to play too much into... A board sweeper like a Storm's Wrath, but this does mean that we have 
Ulamog unlocked for next turn. And I'll just keep the Rada in hand because that's a good threat to follow up. If they do somehow sweep our board, Rada can still be a game ending clock just by itself. Electrolyze to kill two things. Okay, well, that's pretty annoying, honestly. Now, the question is if we fetch away this Draga Tree Speaker or just draw it. We won't have enough mana for Ulamog either way. And this does get us there by itself, so I think we are just going to draw this and save the fetch to try and keep hitting lands off the top. Wow, even after that Electrolyze, are they still going to miss a land drop? Given how this has played out, I do wish I had the Radha in play, but I think we still made the right line, and I don't think like I don't think we need to extend it still. All right, the opponent just passes back, so we'll untap. They go to discard. Exquisite Firecraft. Okay. Well, Xenagos is a pretty good draw. Yeah, actually, Xenagos is quite good, so I think we are going to keep that, even though I would like to hit a land. So we will go to combat. Punch you for five. Cast the tree speaker. And now the question is if we want to uptick or downtick the Garrick. They could have a bolt, they could have Storm's Wrath. So there's the two main considerations. Um I think I'm going to uptick here. Next turn, we're actually threatening lethal with the with the overrun ability either way. And that way, we're just a little bit more insulated. Oh, are they going to... Oh, petty theft. Okay, that is annoying. That's definitely annoying. They're punished for not making a beast earlier. And now we're not going to be able to cast our Ulamog either way next turn. But I still think we're in a good position. Like... We have just such a huge mana and board advantage, and we also have a stacked hand. If our hand was all bad, like, they could beat our board and mana advantage, I think. But we can just keep on deploying reinforcements. We also, if we had land off the top, we actually might still be able to cast Ulamog. Because then we go Xenagos. Oh no, Xenagos doesn't add us any mana. Okay, never mind. So we untap, hopefully hit land on top. Nice. Alright, we'll just play that immediately. Another Planeswalker on top. So, I'll cast Garrick. They dissolve it, okay. Now we can cast Xenagos. And I think we're just going to make a Seder and hit. We could add three men and play Radha or Gem Razor or something, but I want to keep this Nissa on top, and this seems like a pretty good plan. Still setting up for Ulamog next turn, and hitting their life total hard. So now it really is just Storm's Wrath that gets them, that like, can keep them in it. But if they draw Storm's Wrath, then yeah, they get to wipe our board, but then we untap and go Nissa into Radha. And Radha is a lethal attacker, and Nissa is a sticky threat, still bidding up towards Ulamog, so I think we're pretty much good to go. But it starts with Storm's Wrath for them here. Also, with the Gem Razor, even just a plant from Nissa can become a very relevant threat out of nowhere. So, playing against Blue-Red Control, are there any changes we want to make? Um, Nullhide Ferox seems pretty good against them. We'll see. Probably not too many changes. So, we untap, have a land on top, hopefully. Oh, they just conceded. Okay, sure. All right. Should not have drawn that card, actually. That just showed them an extra card of our deck, but minor loss. Um, Definitely keeping all the mana. I definitely like all of these threes here. Obstinate Bayloth is probably not necessary. It's basically just a 4-4 four, four for 4 here, so I think I'd rather have the thing that hits harder and is harder for them to deal with. Um, Yeah, I think that's the only change we're going to make. Um... Petty Theft is very good against the Gargaroth. 
But I still think it's good enough against the rest of their deck that it merits leaving in. So we will just run it like this. Tarmogoyf is also an option. But I don't think we need that. All right, here we are for game two, and this hand is incredible. Turn three Planeswalker into turn four, or turn two Planeswalker into turn three Planeswalker. Sign me up. I think we're going to lead on Pilgrim, because that's the one we let, let, uh, least care about getting killed. If they, yeah, I mean, if they just don't have any piece of interaction on the second turn, they're going to be in rough shape. This also deals with counter spells. Oh, they have Dismember? Okay. Sure, so we can't live the dream of the turn two Domri, but we're still at parity. They go Mountain Go. Do they have another removal spell for our bird? It's actually a pretty good draw, I think. I mean, we want to keep hitting land drops, and that can turn all of our random little creatures into threats later in the, later in the game. No end of turn removal spell on the bird. They could go Electrolyze here, so that would be annoying, but if they don't, Okay, no Electrolyze. Okay, they just copy our bird. Interesting. So, I think we might just go Domri fight the bird. Oh, yeah, especially if they miss a land drop. So, cast Domri. And because of this is a Phantasm limit, we actually don't even need any power to win this fight, but we do have it, funnily enough. So, target creature you control, target creature you control. And we will hit them for one. And now, again, we just have, like, a significant board advantage. We have a Planeswalker on the battlefield. Our future creature spells are not counterable, so I think this game is honestly pretty locked up already. It's a pretty fast game to lock up, and I might, I mean, they could, I guess if they go land Electrolyze, I still think we would be ahead because we could just go land Xenagos, but that would be pretty good. But if they don't have Electrolyze this turn, then it's going to start snowballing very quickly in a way that is good for us and not good for Affinity. Okay, no play, so that should basically just end it. Alright, we will add mana. Question is, do we want to play Xenagos or Thragtusk? I kind of think the answer is actually Thragtusk, just wait. Yeah, I think I'm going to play the Thragtusk, because it can't be countered, and there's a decent chance they have a counter spell, and also this just, like, completely, in, like, we'll have a threat down next turn no matter what. That's close. I can see that going either way. They we're hitting for six next turn either way, with with our play of that turn. Actually, our we hit for more damage this turn this way. So maybe that actually was better, or maybe that's another reason for it. This is very cool art on cultivate. I wish there was a way to blow up the art bigger. I guess I could. I blow it up a little bit bigger. All right, sweet. All we had to do is make our hand bigger, and we would just win. So, very smooth sailing so far. I don't think this deck is unbelievable. I just think we've had a combination of, like, good draws and good matchups and our opponents having bad draws. But whatever the reason, we're 4-0, and none of the games have felt particularly close. So, hopefully we can finish strong and get a trophy. That would be a really fun way to start the Modern Cube season. So, I'll see you in round three. All right, here we are for round three against Bart J. Booz and... We are on the draw with a very close hand. We have a lot of top end, which is not great. We are playing 17 lands. If we can hit enough, this hand has an extremely high ceiling. If we draw, like, honestly, one land in the top two and they don't kill our tree speaker, then we can cast Cultivate, which will guarantee the next couple land drops. Uh, I'm going to risk it. I think this I think this hand has high enough upside and our deck is like we don't have enough mana accelerant that this is worth keeping. Okay. Against this, hopefully they just name green. Oh wait, red. Okay. Well, they might be able to kill our tree speaker now. Okay, this is not developing how we wanted it to. Opponent has a good start to threaten that they could kill our start, and we didn't hit a land on the first turn, so that was pretty much three disastrous things all in a row. We really have to hit land here. It's exactly 50-50. Opponent knows the channel. 
they said they didn't need to wish me good luck, but it turns out in this game they actually did. <laughs> so uh, obviously drawing Gem Razor is pretty disastrous here. Um, we're probably 20% to win or, or less. This is a case, well, actually, I was going to say there's a case where derogatory speaker is way worse than other accelerants, but that's not even really true. We wouldn't have a play anyways. This hand could have been pretty greedy, potentially. Um, <laughs> talking about how he's going to try and make it a little bit of a match. <laughs> so... Opponents thinking that we're going to be intimidating here, but little do they suspect we actually just have nothing. <laughs> well, we have a bunch of things, but not the things we need. Wow, okay, a lot of colors over there. That's Jun. Jun could potentially be a bad matchup because it could have good removal to deal with our ramp and like threats that we can't deal with effectively. But we really, really need to hit lands here. We had we it was like a seventy five percent chance to hit our second land drop there. So it was like that and I do think if we had hit it, we would be in a phenomenal position. Well Okay. Come on, deck. So if we draw one land, we can play cultivate. And then our hand is fairly good at playing from behind. Like we can catch up with these things. Five mana. This could be very bad. Yeah, that was that was very bad. I think we're just gonna lose to that very quickly. Um. Yeah. Are these are the lands still colorless? They are. So even Ugin wouldn't get there. I think I think this game is just over now. I'm not gonna concede yet. Because we do have a lot of explosive ramp if we can draw a land. If we don't draw land, definitely conceding, though. Okay, well, I appreciate the irony, if nothing else. All right, well, hopefully we can give Bart Jebus, or let me know if I'm pronouncing that right if you if you see this in the comments. Um, but, yeah, well, hopefully this one will be a little bit more balanced. This looks like it's basically a mirror match. Opponent played a lot of colors of mana. Um, I don't know if they're actually playing all of those spells. It's a bummer we don't have Nyssa. That is the best Planeswalker um, in, for this sort of deck. I think Master of the Wild Hunt is better than Obstinate Bailoth here. Um, do we want to make any other changes? No, I think we'll keep the rest of this. Alright, here we are for game two. Hopefully this one goes a little bit better. So far, none of the three games of this, uh, or the three matches have really been close so far, but hopefully that'll change. This hand is amazing. We can go turn two, level up Tree Speaker, turn three, Vivian. Turn one looks the same as it did last game, but the follow-ups will be a little bit better. Thank you, I appreciate that. I do think it was a reasonable keep, um, especially with all those like great three mana plays that we could unlock with the um, tree speaker. But I, yeah, we were basically like, so we were seventy-five percent to hit it in the first on turn two, and we were like basically eighty-eight percent to hit it on at least by turn three and i think even if we hit it on turn three against most decks we would be fine our opponent had a very good draw there or like a very i mean just hitting us with a bunch of three threes that early is is tough okay vista is not great but we can use those with uh coarser and actually with coarser and vivian we could sort of live the dream next turn or not next turn but in the next couple turns i'm just gonna level this up again i think that's a little bit better than hitting in for one damage Now next turn we can play Vivian and crank out a 3-3, and then we can play Corsair. And the one problem with having a lot of Planeswalkers is the Corsair Vivian engine doesn't let you just always play cards off the top. We do have some cards that we can't play with either of these, but most we can. So, And we have fetch lands too, so I think we should be pretty much good to go on that. Okay, so we will go Forest. Terrible draw for sure, but I still think there's a good position. I don't expect a counterspell here. It would be brutal if they had it. Okay. Uh, drawing a Thrag Tusk is amazing. So I'm going to make a 3-3 three, three with probably Trample. Survive Triumph. So that's blue, red, green. Okay. Actually, I think Vigilance is a bit better than Trample here.
So we could minus Vivian to go grab another creature with a Thrag Tusk, but we'll see what we have on top. Does this reveal, or does it say you look at it? Let me look at it. Okay, Harmonize is a great card, but it's not going to be good here. We have a better card advantage engine than they do. Especially if they have to discard a hand size. Oof. Well, hitting that off the top is like the one thing we can't do um, with, uh, with the Corsair, but I think that's fine. So we're just going to go Thrag Tusk. Gain some life and get a fetch land into play. We could have minus there, but I don't want to shuffle this away. So we'll grab another Vigilance counter, put Prismatic Vista into play, and attack for three. And now we have a very dominant board present, so we can deal with Planeswalkers pretty well, and we also have a card advantage engine going, so... The only real way I can see them getting out of this is by having their, an Ugin of their own. So hopefully we can kill them before they get to that much mana. They pass. All right. We untap. So we will go Courser. Land off the top. Oh, this is annoying. Now we have to... I would love to be able to cast this, but we have to shock first. So I think I am going to shuffle... And if we don't reveal a creature on the top, we can just play Xenagos, and that's potentially even better. Oh, wow. So I think we're going to go Xenagos. Plus this for a beast. Well, actually, no. No, we don't even need to do that. We can plus this for mana. Make a bunch of green. Minus this. And we're going to grab um, the, the dude that finds a land. So we're going to cast this with Mutate on this beast. Search for um, Nyssa. We don't want that, so I'm happy to shuffle that away. Okay. Now we will just pass. Oh, we'll put the gem raiser over. We want the four power instead of the three. Don't have enough mana to cast that, but I think that will be fine. So we attack with everything. And if they take it, they're falling to four. Yeah, this should be pretty much game over. Okay, trading off with the Vigilant Beast, sure. I mean, our hand is bad, so there is that, but I still think we should be good to go. I mean, I don't think they're playing a board sweeper deck, and they only have five mana right now. And even if they do sweep the board, we get this. Okay, yeah, much better showing our opponent's head. <laughs> yeah, that is true. So, two fairly lopsided games there. Hopefully the third one can have a little bit more back and forth. So, do we want to make any changes, is the question. Steel Leaf Champion could be good. But I think all these other cards are a bit better. Uh, Master of the Wild Hunt, if they don't have removal, can really be a great creature. Nissa is not amazing, but I think it is worth it. Especially for the opportunity of casting it on turn 2. So, we'll just run this back. If you just drop Nissa on turn 2 and then just make a chump blocker every single turn, it's a very, like, you can ultimate this very quickly. And he goes to 4 on turn 2, and 5 on turn 3, 6, 7, ultimate on turn 6. Totally agree with this point. Yeah, I, I think green is the best color in this format. Hmm, makes non-interactive games. That's fair. I mean, yeah, actually, that, that is sort of fair. You get ahead or not. <laughs> well, hopefully this time we both get equally ahead, and then we can... Pull out a close win with the Ugin. Actually, uh, we maybe should have cut the Gem Razor. We haven't seen anything that that's good against yet. That Yeah, that's probably a mistake. So, if we draw the Gem Razor, we will wish that it was... Um, probably just the Steel of Champion. So, we'll know which we would prefer here. Easy keep. Our opponent's also keeping... 
they it looks like they have a lot of one man XLR, and so I would imagine they have one here. Yeah. Oh, okay. Utopia sprawl. I would love to draw Utopia sprawl of my own. Ooh. Okay. Well. Hopefully, I mean the Thrag Tusk and the Rada. I mean Rada helps us to continue hitting land drops, and Thrag Tusk helps us to survive. So, hopefully we can get up to the Ulmog, and I think Ulmog will be pretty good if we can get there. Now the question is, would we rather play Rada or Sakura Tribelder this turn? And that's pretty close. I think I would rather play Sakura Tribelder. Well, actually no, I think I'm gonna play Rada. We can't play Thraktusk next turn, but I really like the idea of getting Rada down. And this gives us a good chance of being able to play a land off the top next turn, because we can look at the top card, play it if it's a land. Ooh, Corsair, okay. We can play it if it's a land. If it's not, we can play Sakura Tribelder, Shuffle, and then play that if it's a land. What color? Did they name red for this? Yes, okay. Well, they have five mana here, so we'll see. I mean, if they have Nissa, it'll be pretty bad. Black mana. Well, five mana is bad. Acidic slime, all right. Well, that's bad, but it's not as bad as it could have been. Nissa would have been much scarier. Okay, no land on top. I think I am going to shuffle away this Master of the Wild Hunt right now. Actually, never mind. I think Master of the Wild Hunt is a pretty good draw. So we will just cast a Courser and attack. But this can start gunning down their mana pretty well. This has first strike, so I'm not worried about the death touch. Um, yeah, I think Master of the Wild Hunt is actually a pretty good draw here. Uh-oh, another thing that is a lot of mana. This could be scary. Harmonize, okay, that's... Well, that, that is actually pretty scary. They're going to have some big plays next turn now. If we were, like, advancing our own plan in a very threatening way, Harmonize wouldn't be too scary, but in this case, like, it's set up for a long game, so the card draw is very good. Okay, that was a great draw. So we can play land off the top, or, I mean, we knew we were drawing. Great thing to reveal on top. So we do that, and cast this. And I'll attack for three. I guess technically we should attack first, but it doesn't matter at all here. There's no way that could influence their decision. So now we'll see what they have. Hopefully nothing too scary. Next turn we can either go Thragtusk plus Sakura Tribelder or Nissa. I think, or sorry, and then uh, Nissa plus Sakura Tribelder or Thragtusk. I kind of think the double spell is better because I really would like to ramp into this Ulmog as fast as possible. Plus, the Grudge Eye Builder would find us red mana. But, we'll see. Wait, how, oh, yeah. I was going to say, how do we even cast this Rada? But, we have a Rootbound Crag that has been destroyed. If we do get to untap with this Master, I'll be feeling pretty good about life. Because we can start shooting down their mana development. We haven't seen, like real top end from them yet. I mean, I, I assume it's in the deck, but we basically just lost to an, one Nissa. That was, like, their only thing. And, and like, Mana Screw in game one. And then in game two, we didn't see much. So I don't really know what big top end cards to play around. Like, if they had, like, a Tarka or other stuff like that. Okay, well, we're about to see something scary. That's seven mana. Oh, is it a Tarka? Eight mana. Crater Hoof. Does that kill? I don't think that kills us. Yeah, this actually isn't the worst thing for us. So if they attack with everything, we can double block this. Oh, wait, no, that doesn't... Oh, yeah, yeah, we can double block this, and they can only kill one thing. And then we take 15, and then we can start gaining life if they don't kill the Corsair. I think we actually can beat that. So rare to beat a Crater Hoof, but I think we might actually be able to pull it off. So we go down to 6, but now we can gain a bunch of life. Okay, I don't think... Let's see. I think we're going to go... Nissa plus Tribelder here. We could also... Just, maybe we should just play the Thrag Tusk. I don't really want to draw birds, but actually... I was thinking I didn't want to draw birds, but actually maybe we do. Because that would help us to get to Ulamog earlier. Yeah, I think I'm just going to play Thrag Tusk. It also just like helps us stabilize the board a lot. Oh, wait. Whoops. Alright, 
So we get that down. And now the question is, do we want to attack for five? They have five, six, seven, eight. I actually think we do. Their life total is also very low. They still have three cards, so there's a lot of things that could kill us here. But um, we have a solid board. We have a life advantage. We have They have a mana advantage, but we still have a solid amount of mana. There's a big turn, though, so we'll see what they have. It looks like it is a lot of mana. Seven, uh-oh. Don't be a Tarka, please. That's probably worse. Yeah, that's actually almost definitely worse. So we'll see if they attack here. If they do, I probably will just trade the Thrag Tusk with the Crater Hoof. Okay, land off the top. Ugin on the top. Hmm. Well, I think we need to. I need. We need to advance land. I, like that would be a great draw. I would love to draw that, but we need to hit a land drop this turn. Okay, that's a great thing to hit on the top. So we go land. That is also actually a pretty good draw. I think that gives Ulmog next turn. Although we might be shuffling the way, so we will cast Tribelder. And birds. And the birds actually can just kill them in the air next turn, I think. I think we actually are in okay shape. So we pass it back. Unfortunately, we're one mana shy of being able to flip the Nissa right now. I would love to be able to flip the Nissa and then crank out a 4 4 immediately. But next turn we have 5, 6, 7, 8. Nine. Oh, we're well, one mana shy of being able to cast Ulamog. But yeah, the, the Birds of Paradise can swing for seven. Oh, wait. Actually, it might be one mana shy. Lindalundra. Okay, that is not very scary. They don't even have blue mana up right now. Oh, wait, actually, that is annoying, because now they can block our birds. Okay, no attack. I, I'm just going to sacrifice this. Okay, hitting a land on the top is bad. Well, another land on top, so play that. Wow, okay, that is pretty annoying. Oh, wait, okay, we can at least flip our Nissa. And now, oh, wait, now a plus. It goes straight onto the battlefield. Ooh, okay. And so now we have 7, 8, 9, 10 mana. So we could just cast Ulamog. Is that actually the best line? We could also pump this bird 5, 6. No, that, that, that doesn't do it. So we will just go for the Ulamog. Taking out definitely the Avenger of Zendikar. And then... I'm not really sure what the other one should be. We could go for their mana and hit the forest that has the Utopia Sprawl on it. We could also just take the Trampler, but I don't think that makes too much sense. I think I'm actually just going to go for their mana, as weird as that may seem. I just, like, we can beat this board. So I just don't want them to be able to do another really scary thing. Wow, okay. Opponent, is that, is this a concession? I will say, this, so... You rightfully said that a lot of games you get ahead or not. This game has been more back and forth than normal because we've both been doing like powerful plays throughout. Man, I really appreciate that. I if you watch this, thank you, man. Like please comment. I like I I I would love to engage with you a little bit more. You're a great opponent. Your deck was sweet. Um, we have some ideas about the format it seems like, and we got a trophy. So really, really happy with that. Um, can't really ask for a better start to Modern Cube. So hopefully this is a sign of things to come. I think this format's good, and I think I have a pretty good grasp on it. So yeah, uh, thank you for watching. Let me know in the comments if there's any places where I should have done something else, and see you next time.